All right, guys, welcome back. Part three of our MiG-23 conversion, what if, to a Navy F-14-ish fighter. Um, in the intervening time, I've done just a couple little things. I added some air scoops, some ram air scoops. Um, because I had them and because I, I didn't like the way that there were these chunky bits in, in the uh, pylons here, I added some anti-sway braces, which actually fit really nicely with these Phoenix missiles. Um, they look pretty good. They, they were with the trumpeter kit. Um, and that's, yeah, basically all I've done. So we're gonna continue picking up where we left off, um, finishing up just a couple little details in the cockpit. There's a, just a couple things we need to do. So I've got the HUD glued on. Um, seat is in, all instruments are in there. Um, I used NATO black to give a nice, flat, dull look to the instrument combing the shroud over there. Uh, what I need to do is paint the actual projector there for the heads-up display. So I'm going to start by using a little bit of silver, chrome silver. Uh, I'm going to give it a base of that, and then I'm going to put a little bit of transparent green over that, just very, very lightly. Um, touch this up and give it a little bit of dry brushing. And really, that's all we need to do. The seat is all done in there um, with all the photo etch details on it. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Our photo etch um, ejection handles seem to have broken off somewhere. Well, good thing that in an F-14 there are two seats because our, our, uh, our quick boost um, ejection seat set came with photo etch for two. So I will just get the other uh, ejection handle done up real quick and, and affix it there before we close up the canopy and everything. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. I'll just have to be extra careful with it. I didn't even realize that that had come off. Um, so I'm going to finish up these details. And then, like I said in the previous video, we're going to uh, fix the windscreen down permanently because that's not coming off. Um, but we are going to... Um, just tack this down with some PVA glue because in the end it's, it's going to be opened up. What I'm going to do before I, I stick them down though is a lot of people like to use various methods for masking off canopies. I still love using parafilm. I'm an old school kind of guy. I love using parafilm. I think it's very easy to use and very effective.
first steps that we're gonna do for painting, and you know, I've, I've gotten just a few more little odds and ends on here, um, and I'll get a few more on as we go. One of the last things I'm gonna do before the full painting is the photo etch, because it's so fragile, but I've got, see some pitot tubes on there, and a couple more little air data sensors and stuff. Um, what I'm gonna what I'm gonna start with though is the natural metal color that's gonna go uh, around the engine nozzle and everything um, because that's kind of that's a two-step process and you know we're gonna have to put down our alclad black base and then I'm gonna use you know alclad metallics for this um, and I've already you know I've had the engine nozzle done for a while shouldn't be touching it with bare hands but I am but it's all right I'll, I'll wipe it down. So what we're gonna need to do is, um, there's some very fine lines around which we need to mask, and I'm gonna be doing that with some uh, small Tamiya masking tape just around the fuselage area here. Um, get that sprayed off. I'm also gonna use that to spray the canopy area because the internal of the canopy is gonna be black as well. Um, I finally got it all tacked down. Um, ready to go. So I'm going to get that masked. I'm going to get that black sprayed. I'm going to give that a little bit time to uh, dry and cure. And then I'm going to spray. I haven't decided what I'm going to use yet. Because, you know, like I said, I got a little freedom here. I don't know if I'm going to do like a magnesium color or a uh, titanium or just uh, a steel. It's not going to be chrome. It's not going to be too shiny, but we'll see. So as always, we're going to start with the gloss black base, um, which is always good when you're doing metallics. And uh, I recently ordered a new Alclad color, and I have no idea where it is, but it was one that I specifically wanted to use for this. So we'll see what it is I choose to use when I choose to use it. Okay, so yeah, lots of um, masking all over the place, but important steps for realism. So we can start unmasking carefully. Now this aqua gloss, we're gonna leave on there for a little bit just to let it sit dry, cure before we start anything else. And that'll be a good opportunity for me to eat which will be nice. 
Um, but this is important if we want these metallic areas to really kind of stay nice and eye-catching throughout the rest of the process. Originally when I was talking about the metallic areas, I forgot that the F14 had these leading edges that were all very metallic-y. Um, originally I wasn't sure how far I was going to do that on the wings, but I decided I was going to I was going to stick to kind of where natural panel lines are. I thought that was a good way to measure it. Um, so they don't go all the way up the wing. They just go where there are panel lines already. I thought about stopping at the uh, leading edge slats. But, oh, look at that. That's small. That's okay. You know what? We can paint over that. Got a little bit of bleed underneath the tape. It's not bad, though. We can always fix that. Other than that, everything looks pretty crisp and clean. The Alclad colors, you know, I thought I had um, a more metallic. I didn't realize how dark the steel was going to come out. And I didn't, I, you know, I just, I didn't want to use the same aluminum because aluminum is actually pretty, pretty shiny. When I was doing this area around where the nozzle is going to go. So unfortunately that came out a little darker than I wanted, but that's why I did a little bit of contrasting color with the aluminum there and the hot metal blue just to, you know, so it wasn't such a, a single panel of, of dark color. And I think that worked out pretty well. Unmasking is just... You know, the fun part is then after the aqua gloss is, is all dried and cured and stuff, we get to mask all of the metallic areas that we just painted. Won't that be nice? Um, but... When we do the actual paint job, it's it's predominantly going to be gloss skull gray. But we've got some areas that are going to be red for the markings. And then we've got some areas that are going to be white. In addition to the areas that were already painted white. Yeah, so that's actually that's not too bad. That you know, I was able to blend some colors together and get it a little more metallic looking than I than originally I, I thought it was going to come out. And when we put the nozzle on, you know, since I painted that metallic blue band, um, which actually remind which way does it fit? Well, I'll get the actual perfect fit later, but I just wanted to do something contrasting a little bit, give it some, some color. And, you know, this will be weathered up so it won't be so bright and shiny in the end. But there we go. I like that. That's pretty cool. That works. That works well. So we've got. Oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot our stabilators. They need to get unmasked. I've got to be careful of those uh, static dischargers on the trailing edge. So at this point, they can break off very, very easily. You know, the fact that this is molded all in gray, it's not the right color gray, obviously, but it gives us kind of an idea of sort of how this whole thing's going to look. So we've got our nice metallic leading edges um, around the engine area. Yeah, I think that's going to look pretty good. I'm going to be happy with how this comes out. I'm going to have a red cap on the vert uh, along with, you know, the other colors. We're gonna have red along the bottom. We're gonna have red on these ventral fins. I gotta let this sit for a little bit and just chill and resist the urge to mess with it. So I'm just gonna let it sit and chill and resist the urge to mess with it. So just a word as I'm progressing and finishing the little bits and, and beeps and squeaks and stuff. Um, there's little mistakes in these instructions. Like over here, you'll see it calls for PE photo etch piece number three. That looks like this that goes over there. Um, and it fits into a little recess like that. So photo etch piece number three is this guy right here. And 
for the life of me, I could not figure out how I was supposed to fold this into anything that resembled that, which ends up looking like, you're probably not even gonna be able to see, this piece over here to fit into there, which ends up, once it's done, looking exactly like this piece over here, which is PE part number four, you know, but on the opposite side. It turns out PE piece number three actually just folds in half and goes as part, remember I said when I was building the gun, I'm not gonna use those photo etched parts. So there are some, there are some small parts, uh, discrepancies, I mean, small mistakes. This should be photo etched part number one, not PE three which is the exact, you know, opposite part of PE4 to go in there. So, uh, and, and I found a couple other mistakes in the instructions going through, but I, I just wasted about half an hour, honestly, trying to figure out what is going on. Had I just glanced over at the other page and, and seen this, it would have saved me a lot of time, but I could not for the life of me figure out how this piece right here, this little guy, was supposed to fold into that shape. So, um, photo etch, a lot of modelers hate using it. I don't understand why this could not have been done with plastic, but you know, it is what it is. At least I found the piece and I know how to finish this off now, but that's just a word of warning about this kit and these instructions. All right, so we're masked off pretty much. Um, we are PE'd, the parts I choose to put on anyway. Hmm. This one's getting a little bent. I extra crazy glued it in because it's so thin, this uh, CUHF antenna on top. Um, I think we're just about ready to give it a little alcohol wipe down and start painting. I got the tail hook installed. Um, boy, this is going to be some fun. So I got various sub assemblies here. Um, some air brakes built with the, the actuators in there. Uh, I got all sorts of other parts in the box ready to go. Oh, Oh, good thing I noticed that. I gotta mask those off, but I will. So, I know a lot of people are big on the um, the black priming and then doing the squiggles into the, in the individual panels uh, and, then, and then doing the painting. You know what's worked really well, though, for me, for navy gray, just all over navy gray fighters, is doing the good old-fashioned white primer, black panel lines, and then doing the gray and then just doing some panels, you know, different shades and everything. I'm gonna stick with what I know for this one. Uh, I'm not discounting the other method. I'm sure it works great, but I'm just, I like the way this works. So I'm going to go with it. Uh, I'm going to give this, I've never used this before, but I've heard great stuff about it. Normally I would, I would use my Alclad uh, white. I am very upset with the performance of Vallejo primers lately. I don't know what it is. They just, yeah, I want to try some new things. So I'm going to give this a shot for the primer. I'll probably use the, uh, the Alclad white. Uh, as you know, just as my my top white for the white areas, but we're gonna we're gonna get this going in the airbrush and give it a shot.
Oh my, lots of painting, lots of stuff going on with this. Uh, as you can see, I am at a an airbrush finish stage where I have uh, got an engine nozzle attached. Um, I have my fins painted. I have the horizontal stabilizer, stabilators drying right now. Um, I have three different shades of gray all together on the aircraft to make it blotchy and, and realistic. Um, so I need to do some hand detail painting now on a few different places, a few different things on some launch rails. Uh, I want to give a, a nice chromish trim to the intakes. A couple other places before we seal all this work with the first gloss coat so we can start working on uh, decals and stuff. I just realized I have to unmask the leading edges, which I'll do in a moment. So basically, I have, for the purposes of this, one day, gloss coat, decals, weathering, and sealing. Yeah, um, and I still have weapons to work on, so. But this looks, um, it's starting to look like an airplane. How about that? Pretty cool, huh? I think I can actually, uh, you know, against my better judgment, I'm going to unmask here and just attach these guys so we can get an idea of, of what it all looks like together. And I love this stage. Everything, everything looks better after painting and everything will look even better still after the gloss coat because I always say this um, something about the gloss really brings colors together it tends to darken things up just a tiny tiny smidge but it, it really brings everything together and starts to make it look like one complete project which is really my favorite part of anything so with this done honestly it could, it could look like a Russian plane still or a Navy fighter you know without the markings and everything but once we start putting all the Tomcat stuff on it's you know it's gonna start looking like that but honestly with color on it that vertical stabilizer is starting to look a lot more organic to this design which is which is whew, you know wipe the sweat off my brow because that's what I was most worried about on this whole thing another level done and you know it's it's subtle stuff but every little bit counts so what I'm ready for now is the first gloss coat and we're gonna go back to the aqua aqua gloss because it's just a really good acrylic coat to start us off on all of our weathering and and decals and everything so switch the airbrush needle out for a larger one and we're going to get to this and uh, this also uh, cures a little bit faster than some of the lacquer or enamel ones too desk is becoming so messy as I go through this project but you know what pushing through so we've got gloss and it is almost ready for all of our decaling and and associated adventures there um, this is looking more like a fighter plane yay so while that's still setting up though I decided that I was gonna start working on armament because we're going to need to do that too and as i was checking the references and resources i figured out that this plane where the markings were going to do it actually was flying in 1989 which puts us in the position to use uh, some different weapons than i thought at first i thought we were going with the earlier aim 54 a's and that we were going to be using um, the earlier aim sevens and everything um, but it turns out that when we're talking 1989 we we are uh we're, we're using much better weapons much uh later weapons than i than i thought 
So we're actually going to be using the AIM-54Cs, we're going to be using the uh, AIM-7Ms, and we're going to be using AIM-9Ms, uh, which are actually still used today. Um, the AIM-9Ms in the Air, in Air Force service and Navy service have really been replaced by the AIM-9X, um, but there is still the F-22 that, well, at this point, they're converting. But for a long time, the F-22 could not use the AIM-9X because guess what? They didn't build the weapons bay big enough to hold the AIM-9X, which was, by the way, under per, under you know development when they made the F-22. So it's just a stupid mistake. I have the AIM-9s from the Hasegawa weapon set, and they're pretty well detailed. We're still using the Meng weapons. We're just using a, I mean, very very little uh, different surface details, basically, and some different decals on, on the big missiles than the original ones we we're gonna use. But they're all built and assembled, and what's really awesome, it makes it so easy. They're basically painted pretty much the same. Um, we've got white radomes and gray bodies for the Phoenix and for the Sparrows. Uh, the exact same color gray for most of the body for the sidewinders and slightly different color. We got a little uh, silver area and then kind of a, a dark gunmetal color for the forward fins and seeker. They're not hard to paint, not at all. So I'm getting set up to do that. We're going to use some, this is uh, light ghost gray is the color that they're going to be. And this is a surface primer that is in light ghost gray. So it's a one shot deal very easily. And then I'll, I'll just paint. Um, some of the other areas um, by hand. I, I will do the radomes, you know, in just white, insignia white, and then I'll, I'll paint the little details that we need here by hand. But I figured while I'm waiting for this, I, I don't want to lose any time, so I'm going to move right on to getting the, the weapons done and glossed so that as we're doing decals on the plane, we have our weapons getting set up and ready for us to start working with them too. So I'm going to start mounting these up for spraying and uh, you'll see them again in just a little bit. So the decals that we're going to be putting on this thing are going to be pretty, pretty famous Tomcat markings. We're going to be doing the 1989 Good Golly Miss Molly or just the Miss Molly. I, I had to say Good Golly Miss Molly. Um, there's a, a story behind this one, which is pretty cool, but um, it's some of the most colorful coolest Tomcat markings around. So not only is it, is it the VF-111 markings that I wanted, but it's got some awesome nose art on it. Um, you know, we're gonna have to figure out if we can even fit this all on the aircraft that we're working with. Um, but, you know, this decal set comes with full stenciling, which is really nice. Um, these are, are cut up already, because the guy that I bought the decals from was first gonna try to sell me just one just the set of markings I needed but realized that that was never gonna work out so uh, he ended up just selling me the whole set um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna have to really see if I can actually fit Miss Molly on the side of this plane I don't even know if that works now that I think about it but we'll see there are gonna be a couple stencils that I'm gonna have to steal from an F4 like the uh, the jet intake warnings and everything but this is where the work begins um, to get this thing done. I got Miss Molly on there pretty nice. I cut a little, little tiny slit there so we could uh, fit that angle of attack uh, sensor in. Got a few wrinkles in the mouth, but we can we can slice those and use some setting solution to get them all cinched down. Right now, the biggest problem child is. The tail flash, which does fit mostly right, but so the instructions called for using Insignia Red, uh, which I did, but as you can see, uh, the Insignia Red is actually a lot darker than the decal red. So I also have Guards Red, which um, I think is probably a better match for the red on the decal. So I'm going to have to go up, go back and, and, and touch up some of the areas around here. And, you know, we're going to have to trim the decal to fit a little bit. Oop, uh-oh, get back up there. 
Um, the, the, you know, trimming of the vertical stabilizer is not going to affect anything that we're doing here, which is great. Uh, right now I'm just trying to keep this decal sort of fitting towards this. I think the decals were made for the uh, Tamiya Tomcat, and, and you remember these are testers parts. So it's not going to be a perfect fit, unfortunately. Um, but we're going to do the best we can, getting it all to smooth down, um, and then, you know, trimming. And then I'll go back and I'll, I'll fix it. But that that is working so far. Now there's going to be, you know, some markings that we're going to have to shift around, like you know, the nose numbers and and some other stuff just just isn't all going to fit. We're going to have to we're going to have to fudge it a little bit, but we're going to make do. Um, I'm sure I can figure this out. The important part is getting the the main you know visuals here. And this is vital. We're you know, this will get here the um the VF111 that goes right about meow. Be able to get that on there and some of the other important features that make this very recognizable as a Tomcat, as a VF111 jet, and as the number 200 Miss Molly. So it's gonna work, guys. It's gonna work. Got a got a good feeling about this. So I'm gonna get back to work and show you when I get a little bit more done. In the realm of the very fortuitous, take a look at that. So I, I just happen to have these decals from Warbirds, and it's uh, you know for an F4B and the Air Force F110 Spectre, which is something we'll get into at a later date. Um, all I did was take the the F4 intake markings there, uh, reverse them, and bam, we've got intake markings for our uh, our fighter here, which fit almost perfectly. I'll have to touch up the edges just a little bit with a brush and guess what color is going to work perfectly for that, the Insignia Red, which is, you know, interesting because it didn't work for the, our other colors, but who cares? Um, that is going to fill in one of the missing decals that we didn't have from our sheet. But, um, you know, after a little bit of time, by the way, uh, with um, Microsol and Microset, well, Microset and Microsol, um, these decals are working out perfectly around all of the edges and details and everything going great. Um, so little challenge figuring out where they're going to go on on this shape as opposed to the actual F14, but I don't want to jinx it and say like, oh, everything's fine, but so far, we have not had too many major problems. The white outline that fits the uh, the ventral fin there didn't work. You know, it was sized for a different model kit. So we're just going to go without it because it's still a what if. doesn't need to be 100% to this. But um, I think, you know, as soon as we got these, color, these colors on there, it's starting to look like a totally different plane and really, really cool. So I'm going to keep working and show you what we got in a little bit. I've come a pretty far way on decals. We've got a lot of them done. So what I have pretty much left on this is all the stenciling that goes on the airplane itself. Um, I have the stars and bars for the underwing, but uh, this, to me anyway, this looks awesome. It's really reminding me of an F9F or an F11F. Um, old Navy fighter just because it's got like the single tail the side intakes um, It just kind of looks like one of those old 50s 60s Navy fighters on the weapons front um, So I got painting done um, I got So, you know, I, I'm at different stages of decals with different missiles so far I found a kinetic decal sheet for an F-16, which had some great decals for the Sidewinders, because the ones that come with the Hasegawa set, it's um, they're actually AIM-9L missile, technically. They look exactly the same, uh, but the, the markings are a little lame and sparse in the Hasegawa weapon set C. So these decals are all from the actual Meng set, except for the ones for the Sidewinders. Done with decals for everything. Oh, uh, I have the uh, 
dabs in just to test fix. I think this is how, this is how I'm going to have him sitting as sort of an action pose. Um, so we've got decals and stenciling on the whole thing. We've got the Wicked Witch's sister's leg there. Um, I really think that it just, it looks a little, you know, looks a little weird because I got so much crammed into such small space on the nose because the Tomcat has so much more real estate to put these markings on. But overall, you know, it's, it's, it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good look. So, you can't see a lot of the stenciling unless you're up close, which is kind of the problem. And I left uh, some of the stuff off of the bottom because they're just, you know, you'll never see it. You'll never, ever see it. But ready to transition to some of the next phase of the entire thing. So, now we got that. We got missiles. We got all of our missiles with all of the decals and everything on there. Um, they look great. So on to the next step of a little bit of detail painting here and there. And just a, like I said, a couple other little tiny things here and there that just need to happen before I start doing the panel lines. And I tested the panel line wash, if you can tell on the left side there, right, right there. I have, and I've never used it. I have this Tamiya dark gray. I'm going to start, I'm going to do most of the, the boring stuff off camera, like doing this little tiny detail painting again off camera. And, and then you'll see the final result, you know, when I get there. So I'm going to do the little detail painting, picking out little things here and there with the brush. Um, and then I'll, I'll actually do the fast motion panel line stuff that you can see how that's going on.
We are semi-glossed. We are moving right along. Um, we've locked in our weathering and everything. My favorite part, it's time to unmask the canopy. This is, if I'm gonna break something on a plane, it's right now. It's while I'm unmasking the canopy. This is when I'm going to destroy work that I've done. But let's see. This is coming off pretty well. The thing about parafilm is if you ha if you don't leave it on for like a, a ridiculous amount of time, it does come right off nice and clean. If you leave it sitting and you like you, know, you walk away from your project for a really long time, it, it tends to tends to not want to come off nice and clean and give you nice crisp clean lines. Uh, but it's only been a day or so, so we're doing pretty well. Nice. Sometimes when you have complicated little areas, you know, just a little, uh, little help with a with your hobby knife again, you know, just tracing along the the borders like that will help. Um, I, I don't, you know, we don't we don't need to do that right here. But you know, if you're having trouble removing it nice and, and crisp and clean, that will will help you out. And doing it with a toothpick prevents any kind of scratching of the plastic, you know, as you're removing. One thing to remember, you know, in scale, the uh, scratches would look very large and out of place. But if you ever get up close and personal with a, a well-used fighter plane, uh, from far away, the plexiglass does look perfect and, and clear and everything. But you get up close and there are lots of little scratches all over it. Especially older ones that spend a lot of time in the sun. Just a small detail that you can pick up when you spend a lot of time actually in your combat aircraft. All right. And oh, look at that. Looks way more like an airplane now. So now what I've got to do is start installing landing gear. Um, and for to do that on this one, we have to actually build up the doors and stuff on the main landing gear. We have wheels. Not bad. We'll see it sitting on those wheels shortly. But wheels are attached. Some complicated little sub-assemblies going on with the main gear. Frustrating little parts and everything. But it sits nice. It takes the weight. They're semi-fragile, so you don't want to just plop it down on there, but it sits. So now I've got to attach landing gear doors and I've got to uh, paint a little trim around the edges, um, the red you know, lines around the landing gear doors that you'd see on uh, Navy fighters. Um, and then we can attach some weapons. Um, I still have to do just a little more detailing in the canopy and stuff, but rolling along, getting done, woohoo! Okay, right, so our status right now. So look at this, landing gear doors on, air brakes attached. I uh, corrected a little mistake there. I had painted them white, but then I took a look at an F-14 with its uh, big air brakes open, and they were red. So I redded them up. Um, we're so close to being finished. Uh, touched up the cockpit a little bit. Painted up the ejection handles. I have just done a little touch up to the inside of the canopy, attached the rear view mirrors on there. Now, I came to realize that one of the things that this kit does not come with is an actuator for the canopy for open display. So I just took some, some parts from the, uh, the seat back of the Russian ejection seat that we're not using anyway, and I just made a little thing right there so that we can actually display this canopy open because that's what I want to do. So it's just a very, very simple 
piece that will let us uh, hold this canopy open. I mean, that's really all it is. And uh, I think that's wider than what the actual MiG-23 opens to, but it lets us see the details in there. So that's all that matters. So we still have to attach weapons uh, and a few clear parts. I think I'm gonna do the clear parts first. And I'm going to use not only the clear parts for the, you know, the anti-collision lights on the wings, but I also got some spare ones just to maybe put something on the tail um, because it's going to be missing uh, one we shaved off of the tip of the tail and maybe put something on the spine. I don't know. We'll see. But you'll see what I end up doing there. And uh, still have to put the lens to the TCS pod under the nose and then we get to put these really fancy weapons on and that's going to be it then this is going to be a completed project we'll get some cool pictures but we'll do a little little walk around of it i'm really excited so stand by for the next step by the way i should also say the instructions are so lacking when it comes to the actual details of how to attach all the parts to this main landing gear and the doors look really helps to get actual images of a MiG-23 landing gear system so you can figure that out for yourself, just FYI. All right, so a little bit more progress, little baby steps at a time. I've got, uh, I've got my port and, well, port and starboard um, nav lights on the wingtips. Um, there we go. I decided I just added um, one little AC light on the vertical stabilizer and just one little AC strobe on the spine and that's looking pretty good. Um, for the TCS, I'm just giving a little, you know, standard kind of military optic gold look there and then we'll put the lens in and that'll be that. Uh, one of the last things we're gonna do, the two, the very last things we're gonna do, pitot tube and um, fixing the canopy on um, but you can see I have got the ejection handle now totally finished We finally have a finished product for this project. And I personally am really happy with it. Um, this, this was a pain to put together in several different places. But when we look at the, the finished result, um, I think it was, it was well worth it. 
It's decidedly MiG-23 in some places. It's decidedly something else entirely in some places. It is going to be something that is going to be very unique, very different to look at. Um, people are going to really going to kind of see what they want to see in it. You know, as you look at it from different angles, it really takes on different shapes. Um, if you kind of just look at the front windscreen there, you can kind of see F-14-ish, but then you kind of look off to the sides and, and you see different stuff. I think it kind of has sort of a 1950s, like I was talking, like the F-11F look to it in different places. You know, you look at the ventral fins and everything, which kind of also gives it an F-8 Crusader sort of sort of look as well um, but everything with this just came together just the way I wanted it to in the end so I you know I'm um, I'm just thrilled uh, you know I'll have some some good quality pictures with close-ups and everything at the end of the video so you know we can get you know better lighting and and just better looks at everything but I love the chunkiness to it which is something that the MiG-23 kind of kind of had, kind of a chunky looking fighter. The F-14 was kind of a chunky bird too, but with the armament the way that it is, just kind of displayed on there. Uh, the modifications that went into it, I think are really cool. The weathering is really cool. Um, the way the cockpit sits open, so you can see all the details. Uh, this really met my expectations and then some has that wouldn't want to mess with it look uh, and like i said during the build I, I, i'm sure i i don't think i don't think the single engine on the mig 23 could haul all this weight uh, i don't even i'm not even sure if a single engine on an f-14 could take off with all this weight but it's just i'm really happy with with the way this all came out uh, what ifs are my absolute favorite to do and i'm so grateful that someone was able to help me finally get the markings I wanted. Because I think that doing this in, you know, I could have done it in the VF-84 and it would have looked cool, but it would not have come together nearly as well as having the Sundowners stuff on there. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed the process with me. I hope you guys like the way it looks as much as I do, but um, please do, you know, let me know what you think of, of the idea of the final product of the little modifications that went into it. Um, what maybe you guys would have done differently to, uh, or, you know, maybe you would have done an entirely different build altogether. You know, I, as I was thinking about this and I was finishing it up, I thought, how cool would it have been, you know, for the purposes of this little group build, an F-105 in Russian colors. Uh, that would have been a classic, you know, Cold War reversal. But this thing just, it came together so perfectly at the end in terms of what I wanted to accomplish. I'm not saying it's a perfect model. There's flaws in there. I know where they all are. <laughs> I can see every single one of them just sticking out like a sore thumb to me, but I'm really happy. I'm really happy with, with what I've got to show for the group now. So very excited to see, very excited to see what you guys think of it all. Um, stay tuned for all the, you know, the pictures, the walk around to, to see how it all looks um, in really good lighting and everything. But Thanks for uh, hanging with me through three parts of this. I really hope you guys are excited about this as I am. And for all you guys out there building at home, keep building them, build them well. And I'll be back with another project really soon.